that's a good response. I like it. So, we have to do a little bit of work. Because I have to do a little bit of work. So, we have to do a little bit of work. We have to do a little bit of work. Yes. 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 Okay. Hey, yeah. Hey, 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 लफ्तार बिता इधर आओ पिछे उधर फिर तो पिछे आओ सारे पिछे 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 आओ सारे पिछे पिछे आओ Okay, so we're going to get the computer warm and we're going to get the introduction to the computer. Okay? Okay? Let's go. So, my name is Pai Sabin Tanu Dasi Dita. So, my name is Sukhwinta Singh. Okay? And then you can call me Sukhwinta Singh. It's my name. So, it works best if you do that. So, uh, uh, so when you say to allow to see Kaiba Devon's Kibaba, we get there. Uh, when you appreciate you get there, you can follow me. Okay, they to see when you uh, party we can't say there. Okay, a party we can't say there. Party call them and what they are like to see Uncle we can't say there. Yoki Kaiba, but you know, Uncle we get there. मैं तो इतनी खुशी नहीं हुई जब मैंने अंकल कहते यार मैंने लगना मैं बहुत ज़्यादा बड़ा हो गया मैंने अंकल कहते यार तो सीखो ना अंकल कहना अंकल भी कहे साकने मगर एक गाल ले आओ किसी ने नहीं कहा नहीं किसी ने भी मैंने वो पोल के आंटी ही नहीं कहा ठीक है ठीक है चलो अंकल अंकल तो मैं सहला गा अंकल जी तो क्या कर वो तो मैं चलो उसका सब तो आके सहला गा मगर ये कैसे आंटी जी क्या आते हो फिर फिर मैं आया हूँ दास हो जाएँ फिर ना इस तरह तो यार हाँ सही कर लिया फिर ये फिर मैं रोल आप यार इसका तो भी वेरी इम्पैरेसिंग रोल बस ओके सो लेट्स नॉट डू दैट ओके सो आप और इतना करते हैं कंप्यूटर में मैं लगता है गर्म हो ही गया हूँ तो यहाँ ना तबेद रखी है कितना करी है तबेद रखी है ओके कोई पता टेक्निकल है अभी जनु पता कंप्यूटर कितना चलाई था कौन यार अच्छा तू तो डबलूसरी बने हैं सीखा अच्छा वाला स्टॉप हो गया चलो लेकिन नीचे का इंटरफ़ेस
I'll tell you what then, I will make sure that uh, the person or the group that uh, gonna get the most questions right, they'll get they'll get a prize, okay? I was only joking about the push hard dance. Give us a coin or a diamond. Okay, give a coin or a diamond. Okay. Give me a coin or diamond. 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 Give me a coin or I will see what I can get for you guys. Is that is that a fair deal, do you reckon? Yes. Okay. So, so everybody pay attention now. Okay? Thank you very much. So before we start, Pena see why you give me Okay? So I want everybody to be quiet. Thank you. Shabash. Much of it be Okay, हम तो सिर्फ बिबे रहना। Okay, स्टार्ट तो नहीं करनी है। So, आप आवाज़ को बोलना पहले, फिर मूल मंत्र का जाप करके, फिर फिर आप आप शुरू करेंगे। ठीक है जी? फिर बाद में पूछना आपको तीन हाथ लेगा। Okay, so मैं पहले बोलना, फिर तो सिर्फ पीछे बोलना, ठीक है जी? Okay? Okay, वाहे गुरु। वाहे गुरु। वाहे गुरु। एक ओंकार संतापुर्ते निर्वैर अकाल मूरत अजुनी सैपं गुरप्रसाद जप आद सच जुगार सच हैपी सच Thank you. So let's make the start. Sare jana ne tiyan. Okay. Haji, shethi dasso. Um, what are the chairs that they hit with slingshots in the hot eyes, rocks? Why were they hit with slingshots? Yeah. Okay. Like, like, Alright, let, let's see what actually happened, right? Yeah, I know. So, um, Guru Gobi Singh Ji Maharaj, as you guys know, he was in a fort. Guru Sahib Ji Kali Kile Vich Sige. Now, Jera Kila Siga, to see Dehne, and the Chile Kila Tan Dista, the Upper Nishan Sahib Tan Dista Hana. So you might be able to spot Nishan Sahib Ji. Yeah. Okay, Hana. So the Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj Ji, or the Nal Kote. Hana. So, Ek Ho Ti Badi Kam Diya. Hana. Tiyan Na Dekhna. So pay attention to the little bit of detail. Right? Now that is very important. Here. Now you can see that that is obviously Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Okay. Now I'm going to come back to this little detail here. Okay, it's very important. Okay. So Guru Sahib was in a fort, and 
the saints in there and Guru Sahib Ji, they were so strong that they were surrounded by a lot of, lot of soldiers, right? But the soldiers were so scared of going into the fort that they thought, hang on, if we try, because they tried before that, anytime enemy went near, then the saints with their bows and arrows would, you know, attack them and kill them all. Or sometimes, saints would come out and face them and then kill them all. So they thought, hang on, we need to work on a different plan here because if uh, we try what we've been trying, we're going to be dead very soon. So they thought, let's just sit back, okay? Let's just sit back, not do anything, but make sure that the kila is cut off from any supplies, okay? And again, kila no kila bolo, ke andar na koi ja sake, na koi andar khan peen aste kuch bhi nahi. So, jere andar singh bethe ne, jere andar guru sahib bhi bethe ya, onar khan ho ni kuch milu ga, te singh jere ne, o pukhe pe aste jido ne kam jor ho ge, asi ja ke unna de hamla kar de, we will attack them when they grow weak because they've not eaten anything or had any water to drink. So they made that plan. And then what started happening, the plan started to work. In a way, because this, the Sengs and Sengdaniya, they not had food for days. The food started to run out. They had very little food left. And they were unable to fight even. Right? Now, Guru Sahib here, right, was ready. Okay? Guru Sahib was ready though. Guru Sahib didn't grow weak. He was ready to go into battle any time. But those uh, forces, the enemy, they thought, hang on. What we need to do is we need to test, right? What's going on with these Sikhs? Are they still strong enough to fight? Are they still strong enough to defend? But the thing is, we don't want to test it by jeopardizing or putting our own life at risk. I tell you what, what we'll do, we will send an elephant, right? And what they did, if you can see here, that the elephant has got a lot of armor on it, meaning there's a lot of hard metal on this uh, elephant, tamiya baniya, that's what the tamiya are like, yeah, so the round things, the shields, yeah? So they said, and also, what they did, they gave the elephant some alcohol as well. So the elephant just went a bit mad, okay? So, and then they sent this elephant charging towards the fort, right? So the idea was the elephant would go in, nobody would dare attack an elephant, right? And then it would go in and it would break the door down and we'll all rush in and I would capture Marad and would kill all the Sings in Sindhania and I would win. That was the plan, right? But Sings were ready. Marad was ready. Marad said, well, somebody came to Marad and said, Marad, they have sent this elephant, right? And the elephant is drunk, right? And the elephant is wild and it's got so many shields of protection on him. What should we do? And Marad says, okay, don't worry, right? Don't worry. Now, they said, if they have sent an elephant, don't worry, we have a Hathi too, right? Now, what they meant was that in Maraji's uh, kitchen, there used to be a person, his name was Dunijan, right? Now, he was a bit big, right? He was a bit fat, right? So, Maraji was like, well, if they got an elephant, then we have our own elephant, right? <laughs> We will send him, okay? He will scare the other elephant. When the other elephant sees our elephant, it's going to be like, oh my god, I can't you know, fight this elephant. I must go back. But when that person found out that this is what Maharaj is thinking, that Maharaj is going to send me to go and face an elephant, right? Now he got scared. He goes, I don't want to fight an elephant. <laughs> Who fights an elephant? I can fight perhaps a man. Okay, so who fights an elephant? No, he does. We fight people. So what he did, 
Why he did? He wanted to escape, right? He wanted to escape, but he could go out the front door because he'll get, you know, killed. He could go out any other way. He had to sneak out so that the Roman city doesn't find out, right? Now there was a window, right, that he could escape out of, but the thing was the window was high up, okay? So what he did, he thought, I'll tell you what, I will use my the star, I'll tie it onto something, and then I'll use my the star he has a rope to climb all the way down. So that was his plan. But the thing was, right, he was a bit too fat, right? <laughs> so he didn't he didn't cater for that. So he tied one side of the star on him and then one to somewhere inside the room and then he started climbing down and as he was climbing down the, the star slowly started to rip okay and then before he could make make it all the way down is the star snapped and then he fell on the ground right and then because he was so heavy he broke his leg right and then he just went and then he went back to his bed, his village, right? Now, when he went back to his village, he started saying, oh yes, the reason why I've got this uh, broken leg is because I fought an elephant, right? Now he started lying. It wasn't true, right? Now, there was, after this little thing that I'm gonna tell you happened, then I'll tell you what happened to Durijan, right? So when Maharaj got told that our elephant has run away, right? So what shall we do now? Maharaj said, don't worry. We have another share. A share is going to go and fight the elephant. They're like, Maharaj, which share? Who, who, do, who do you mean? And they said, Maharaj, my Maharaj said, Bajita Singh. He is a share. He will go out and fight. By Bajita Singh, his name is. He can, he can, he can I cannot even defeat the elephant. Well, we'll find out what happened. By Bajita Singh Ji, now, you would think that by Bajita Singh Ji, Singh Ji was a tall and strong person. He wasn't tall. He was strong, but he wasn't tall. So, but one thing he had was a lot of courage. Right? Courage of a lion. Lions are scared of anyone. Right? He had the courage of a shield. Maharaj said that I will send Pai Bhajita Singh. So Maharaj calls him over. He says, Pai Bhajita Singh Ji, now, you know that there is an elephant out there. Says Maharaj, yes, I know. He says, I want you to go out and fight that elephant. And Pai Bajita Singh says, Okay, Maharaj. And then Guru Sahib asked him, Do you think you can fight an elephant? Pai Bajita Singh said, Maharaj, I can't fight an elephant. But if you think I can, then I can't. Right? Maharaj said, Yes, you can. So I said, Maharaj, so be it. Send me out there. I will go and fight the elephant, right? And Maharaj said, before you go, this is what you need to kill the animal, the elephant with, attack it with. Maharaj gave him, okay, a spear. Now, this was not a normal type of spear. This was a special type of spear, right? Now, this spear was like a snake, right? You know how a snake is, right, not straight? Okay, but it's a bit, it's cool. yeah, I see yeah, it's bit windy kind of, okay? Now, that's how the spear was. It was sharp, right? So Mara said, and it's called, that type of spear is called a Nagri. What is it called? A Nagri, yeah. It's called a Nagri. And Mara gave him a Nagri. So now, the elephant, right? They're making the elephant even more mad, okay? By hitting him, by making lots of noise, so that the animal, the elephant, when he goes and charges, whoever comes in his path, he will just finish trunk. 
all these weapons, they actually tie weapons to his uh, trunk as well and all around him. Anybody who comes near the elephant, they're going to meet their death. Hey? Yes. So, Pai Bajitar Singh Ji gets on a horse, right? And then he's got a special spear in his hand. What's that special spear called again? Nagani. Very good. Now, the elephant is running, okay? He's charging and he's making this noise, loud noise, right? Scary noise. Elephant starts running and starts charging. What happens? On the other side, by Bajita Singh on his horse, he gets ready, right? And he starts charging the elephant himself. One side the elephant's charging and then the other side is by Bajita Singh. Now they're getting closer and closer and then the speed's increasing, yeah? The horse starts galloping even faster and faster and faster and on the other side is the elephant, right? When he sees, and he sees something charging him and then the elephant now has enraged even more and then he's running even with more, more force now right? getting ready to trample and step on the horse and step on Pai Bhutita Singh right? now as soon as right, there is that distance there's not much distance left right? now you can imagine a horse compared to an elephant is smaller right so to be able to get to the elephant you're gonna to have to make that distance up somehow yeah so the the way by which the things was going to do that was by actually taking a leap okay so the horse is gonna take a leap so that by which the thing gets to the same level as the elephant and then with his nagani he was going to pierce through those metal bits and through to his head and then that's how he was going to attack it. So, then the time came by Bhutta Singh with a lightning speed, his horse is going at fantastic speed, leaps up, okay. Now, in this image, they're showing you that the elephant tried to then defend itself with his trunk and then tried to push the spear away but the spear carried on going to the point with so much force that it broke through there's seven metal plates tied on the uh, elephant's head it pierced through the seven plates all the way through to the elephant's head and it, the, the basha went all the way in its skin and into its head right as soon as that happened, now the elephant was in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. By Bhutta Singh pulled out his Nagani. Now some of you might be thinking, how was that possible even that a, a spear went through seven metal plates all the way through to its head, an elephant's head, with so much force that it didn't break. How did that happen? What? Come back to that little little detail in the corner. If you see Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj there, what do you see him doing? He's doing something and he's up there. Watching him. He's watching him, yeah, but he's doing something else, yeah. Chikara, okay, I need this one. Simran? He's physically doing something. Okay, look at look at his arms. Haji. He's blessing by blessing. Very good, yes. Very good. He's giving him power. You have got the all right answers. Very good. And I tell you, what's going on is Guru Gobind Singh the Maharaj, okay? His hand is raised so that it's actually Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj himself holding the Nagri and it's Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj himself striking into the elephant's head himself. 
Why? It was Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj's power that he gave to Pai Bhattita Singh that he was able to do that. Right? So the power was Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Right? So anyway, the elephant then turned around and started running back. Right? And all those soldiers were behind, who were behind the elephant, who was going to charge in, and the elephant broke the, the gate. Now, all of a sudden, they found themselves, hang on, now the elephant is charging us instead, right? Now, you can imagine how scared they must have been, right? Now, they started screaming, but oh, but oh, right? And then they all start running back, and then the elephant, actually goes and tramples a lot of them right, and kills a lot of them and then they all just went back and their plan completely fails right by Bhattita Singh goes back okay and Maharaj gives him a shabha say well then by Bhattita Singh that's what I expected of you right now remember what I said what happened to the other person who ran away he broke his leg and then what happened to him that that night he was walking, right, and then a snake came, and a snake was poisonous, he bit him, and he died, right? Now, if he had stayed with Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, and listened to Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj's hukum, now not only he would have been alive, but he, right, would have been remembered, like we remember by Pachita Singh, okay? But anyway, uh, there is a lot of itihas, there is a lot of history. That's one that I wanted to tell you about, okay, what happened outside the fort. That by Bajitra Singh Ji, with his Nagani, he went and he hit the elephant, piercing through the seven plates, iron plates, into his head, and went all the way back, okay? So, the Mughals now, they want to go missing in Maharaj, to leave the fort. Eventually, what happens? Okay. 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 Now, they said they promised Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj because it was getting a bit embarrassing for them. They were like, Maharaj, if Guru Gobind Singh doesn't leave, then he looks bad on us. We need to get him out somehow. So they thought of another plan. Okay, can we have a bit of attention, please? Bahe Guru. Bahe Guru. Bahe Guru. Okay, focusing. Okay. Okay, Kadeo Jan. Everybody get up. Stand up. Okay. Stretch your legs a bit. Make a new star jumps if you want. Okay, very good. Right, you can sit down now, you can normally sit down. Okay, so, they thought of another plan now. They started thinking, we're going to have to be clever about this. They said, we will say to Guru Gobind Singh Ji, if you leave, if you leave, will give you a safe passage. You can go back to wherever you want to go to. We will not attack you. We will not harm you. You'll be able to go back safe. And then they, the Muslim soldiers, the Muslims, they sent their representative of Malvi, which is a Muslim priest. Now he had in his hand their Quran, their holy book. And then the Hindus, they sent their pundit and he had their holy book the Gita and they said Maharaj here's our holy books we swear on them that we will not harm you okay you are allowed to leave the fort unharmed we swear on our holy books right yes so when that happened a lot of the, the things okay Lord the Sikh said that Maharaj, maybe we should take that chance. Okay? Maybe if we go, now they have swore on their holy books that 
they will not attack us. Faraj, this is a good opportunity. Okay? Now everybody, pay attention this way. It's only a child crying. Okay? Nothing to see there. Yeah, we all cry time to time. I cry. And if you don't pay attention, I'm about to cry. Okay? So you don't want to see a grown man crying in front of you. Okay. So, if we come back. Okay, somebody quickly remind me what's happened. Somebody remind me quickly what's just happened. Quickly, honey. So, Okay, so somebody else, Hanji, you can come back, Hanji. Just so. Very good. So they said that we'll leave a path, safe path for the Gomez, we will not harm them or the Sikhs. And when the Sikhs said, Mara, we should take this opportunity, but Mara said, that, Do you really think? that they respect their holy scriptures, their holy books. They said, Mara, but they swore on them. Mara said, do you believe them? They said, no. yes, Mara. You know, we don't like 100% believe them, but we believe them. <coughs> Mara said, do not believe them. They are liars. Okay? Now, the uh, Sikhs were like, but Mara, they promised. Mara said, okay, before we leave, I want you to do this one thing. Okay? I want you to get all these old clothes and things, and I want you to put them together to make it look like a person. So they put all these things together and made it look like a person. And then Mara put that thing that looked like a person on a horse. And then Mara said, now watch what happens. And those people who saying, that we will not harm you, let's see what they do. So, Maharaj opens the gate, right? And then he sends that horse, which is carrying that fake person on it. Now, as soon as the soldiers, the enemy, they see that that's a person coming out, because they don't know it's fake, what do they do? What did they do? They attacked, yes, yeah, straight away. So Marat said that do not believe what they have said. Right? Okay? Now when they attacked, then Guru Gobind Singh said, no one's leaving. But after a short while, then they came back. Right? Those Muslim leaders and those priests and Malavis, they came back and they said, Marat, please forgive us. We will we swear again that this time we will not attack you. Oh, right? Second time. But the Sikhs who were there at that time, they were so tired at that point, they said, Maharaj, please, we need to leave because we haven't eaten for days and things like that. So what Maharaj said, okay, if you really want to leave, then we will leave, okay, when the time's right. And then Maharaj, and that day, he left the fort, okay? Maharaj left the Kila, okay? Maharaj left the Kila. And then Guru Gobi Singh Maharaj, okay? From, uh, from the Kila, Guru Sahib Ji with his family, okay? He left. But those soldiers who made that promise broke their promise again. Right. As soon as they found out that Maharaj has left the fort, they sent all their soldiers. It was getting dark. Okay. Now they went and they started chasing Guru Sahib. Now, if you see here, there's three lines here. You've got the blue, and then you've got the purple, and then you've got the green. Okay. Now when Guru Sahib did left the, the fort, now his family got split in three ways, okay? Now Guru Gobi Singh Maharaj himself, with the Sahib Jali and 40 other uh, Sengs, he left, that's the blue line, okay? And then Mata Gujriji, who's Mata Gujriji by the way? Uh, Haji. 
So you can imagine, it wasn't a big, huge place. It wasn't a fort. But the Gurdwami Singh Maharaj fought from Chamkarti Gadi, who is known as Kachi Gadi. Okay? So Gurdwami Singh Maharaj, he went up there and he set up camp in there. Okay? So the battle of Chamkar starts. Okay? Now, on hearing the Guru Sahib's presence in Chamkar, Nawab Wazir Khan led an army of one million soldiers to Chamkar. One million soldiers. So when uh, the Nawab Wazir Khan found out that I can now trap Maharaj in a smaller place and kill him, right? He is so scared that he sent one million soldiers. That's a lot of soldiers. Okay? And Guru Sahib even only 40 Sikhs compared to the Mughal army of one million. Okay? And then the historic Battle of Jamkor took place in December 22nd, 1704. So the battle took place. Now, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, I just want to tell you a couple of things. How Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj fought. Right? And how the Sahib did it fought. Okay? I'm not going to go into any other details. I'm just going to talk to you about how, the, how great our Guru is. How great Guru Gobind Singh, how strong Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj is. Now, Guru Sahib Ji, in that fort, in that Kachi Gadi, he stood there. Right? And he sees that the army surrounding, there's like millions of them. Can you imagine, like seeing so many that you can't see anything beyond it? Okay? But what Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj does, okay? Now, Guru Gobind Singh Ji gets his deer out, his arrow out. Right? Now, his arrow, okay, has a special thing on it. It has a gold tip. Okay? Now I'll tell you why that was in a bit. But Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj takes out his deed, okay? He loads it in his bow, right? And he stretches it. Now his bow is so strong, right? Who has been uh, to archery? Who's ever tried archery? Right? Okay, not many people. We should you should try it. Now it takes a lot of force to pull that back with. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, so she's tried it, she knows. And this is the amount of force that you needed to pull Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj's bow back. Hanji. I know that you can't do it, or if you do have the strength to pull it back at least like a bit further, your heart hand starts like trembling and the arrow moves around. Yes. You have a lot of strength. Very good. Yeah. You need to have a lot of strength so that when you move it back, your hands are not shaking, right? You needed over a force that was equal to over 200 kilos to be able to pull that ball back. So what it means is, if you held the ball and you tied some weight to it, you needed over 200 kilos for the ball string to go back. That's how much force that was needed. Guru Gobind Maharaj gets out his ball, his feet, he loads it, and he lets go. Now, you can imagine a million soldiers, how they must be placed, one behind the other, right? So many. Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj's teeth went with so much force that it pierced through 10,000 soldiers. One go. Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj's teeth went with so much force that it pierced through 10,000 soldiers. 10,000 soldiers. That is a lot. Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj then takes out his next teeth. Right? And then he loads that up. Now, some people can see from the enemy, what Guru Gobind Singh has just done. They're like, how are we meant to fight this? This is impossible. That we've heard that we need to go and capture Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, but the way he fights, it's impossible us to fight with him. Right? So some of them started looking for cover, they started hiding, because they're like, my God, that arrow went through so many of us, it's unbelievable. Say, we stand no chance. So they started sort of heading for cover, right? 
Gungo is saying Imara takes out his next thief. Right? And he loads his next thief. Right? And he's about to let go. Right? At that point, by their saying he comes. Now, by their saying, what's the meaning of the anybody know? Any someone else? Hanji? Kindness. Now, kindness and compassion. By their saying, he started having compassion. By their saying, he said, Maharaj, if you want, then you can kill not just one, but many million soldiers with your thieves. Maharaj, have mercy on them. Maharaj, have mercy on them. We will go out and fight them. Bless us. We will go and fight them. Right? Maharaj, put your deed away. He did Bainti to Guru Sahib. And then Maharaj put his deed back. Now, Guru Sahib was so strong that single handedly, Maharaj could have took out the whole army. Maharaj single handedly. But by the asking, he came and he asked. So, the saints went out fighting, and then Baba Ajit Singh Ji comes. Says Baba Ajit Singh Ji says that Pitaji, I want to go out and fight. Right? Guru Gobind Singh Ji says, Well then, I will get you ready myself, Hanji. Is it true that Baba Ajit Singh Ji tried to stop me because he was. Um, yes, it is true that Baba Ajit Singh Ji, another saint said, Guruji, don't send your sons. We will go sacrifice our life. Don't send your sons. <laughs> but Guru Gobind Singh Yimara said, the Sahaja, they have come here for this purpose. Right? Do not stop them. And Guru Gobind Singh Yimara sent Baba Ajit Singh Ji himself. Now, Baba Ajit Singh Ji was loaded with so many weapons on him that when he went out to fight, okay, first, he was fighting with his barsha, right? His spear. And he killed so many with just his spear. Now in the film you don't see any of that, right? Baba Ajit Singh again, he was known for his speed. He was so quick in the, in the battleground that it was an, they were unable to keep an eye on Baba Ajit Singh. That's how fast he used to move. Yes, he could go all the way around wherever he saw space. He would quickly move to that space. And then whilst he was moving, he was taking a lot of the enemy soldiers down. Right? And then he went and when he took so many of them down that his spear broke. Right? His spear broke. The Barsha. The spear broke. But when the spear broke, that's when Baba Ajit Singh took out his sword, his karpan. And he started fighting with his karpan. Right? His blade was so fast that you could not see the blade. It was so fast that the karpan looked invisible. That's how fast it was moving. That's how fast it was moving. It looked invisible. But eventually, even the karpan, okay, broke. Then Bhagavad's Qatar started fighting with that and then that broke as well. Now what Qatar is, is a weapon, okay, it's not very big. You put it on your hand, you hold it with your hand and it's like a point, so like a triangle you could say. Along, yeah? That's a Qatar. And Baba Ji said he fought, fought with his Qatar and when that even broke, with his bare hands, he took many of them. But by that time, right, Baba Ji's body was pierced and was cut with so many strikes of a sword and arrows and things like that, that eventually, after killing thousands, now, in the film, they only show about 20 or 30, it was thousands that Baba Ji said, you know, Guru Gobind Singh Yimara says, Salah say Ek so if Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj is saying that my, my Sikh will fight 125,000, so how can it be possible 
Now, Baba Ji said you only took out 20 or 30. No, thousands and thousands. So much so that the Mughals started fearing that, hang on, this battle is impossible to win. That is just one person doing so much damage. And if Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj's peer can kill 10,000 of us, and then Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj's son has come out and he's took out hundreds and thousands of the, the uh, enemy soldiers, they started fearing, hang on, this is an impossible battle because to fight. They thought that all the other soldiers might have been the same as they Yeah. So they thought that if that was just one, what about the rest? We don't know how many are in there. Right? So then also Baba Jujar Singh he ran out and he fought. And he also fought like his brother. Hanji. Didn't he do better and not see command? And sorry? Didn't he um, just start doing the command then and did get out a most of the time? His team command? In the movie, it yeah. said that he was in the middle of Gatka when he started fighting, starting the Thief Command. Uh, I'm not too sure about that detail, not too sure. But like I said, there's a lot of things that you need to read up. Because uh, in the film, when they make a film, they're not always 100% accurate, right? But Baba Jida Singh, fought very much the same. Okay? Very much the same. Okay? Now, they. The way they fought, how old was Baba Jida Singh? Anybody know? 16. 16? 2000. No, 18. No, 18 was Baba Ji Singh. So 16. Okay. There's been, it's, it's been 16 or 14. So 14 years of age. Now, to look at Baba Ji Singh, he looked, okay, not a grown up. But when he was fighting, he was taking on these generals that were in many battles. And to Baba Ji Singh, Ji, fighting them was so easy, right? Just like in a playground, right? That's how easy it was for Baba Jujar uh, Singh. He was just like, he was in a playground playing. That's how much ease he was fighting with. What? The reason why they became Shaheed, because the weapons that they were fighting with eventually broke. Now, if they, those weapons hadn't broke, they would have gone through all of them. They weren't defeated, yeah? So they gave their Shaheedis. Okay, uh, I realize that you guys have been sat here for a long time. So what I'm going to do is uh, quickly go through uh, just one point and then the short decided and that's it. I say, key Guru message, Guruji treats all of us like his sons and daughters. Therefore, he had no hesitation in letting the elders have that they fight along with other things. While fully aware, they would be martyred. So Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj loves you the same as he loved his own children. He doesn't love you any different. If anything, he loves you more. <coughs> Why? Because those Sajjali, they gave their lives for us. Okay? Okay. Now, this is uh, Mataji. Okay? Now, remember, they went through a jungle Okay, and uh, there's a snake. Okay, there's a lion. And there's a tiger. Uh, there is, this is Gangu, Brahman, right? We know the story, yeah, so I'm not going to repeat it in detail. That he found them, he took them home, and at night he stole their money. Okay, and then when Mataji said that the money has been stolen, and he started saying, Well, are you accusing me? And in the end, he got the Sote Sahajjade arrested and Mataji arrested. Hanji. Uh, if he uh, just wanted to be like with his family at home, why did he work for Guru Gobind Singh Why did he work? For Guru Gobind Singh Obviously, why did he... was his friend that was good. The reason obviously in those days and even now, people sometimes have to uh, go away from their family to earn a living. That's sometimes not possible to stay near your family and, and work and make a living. So that was the reason for it. Yeah? Okay, right. So 
I'm just going to quickly get you to towards the end here, because you know this saga, you've uh, you heard it you know, many times, okay? Now, they were lodged in the night in a cold room in the tower, that's called a Khanda Burj. Okay? Now, it was very cold up there, and you can imagine that uh, being up there without any food, okay, without anything to co uh, cover themselves up with, uh, it would have been really cold up there. Okay? So, when they actually were presented, okay, in court, now remember that there was uh, a big door, right, and then there was a small door to get through, right? Now, before they went to court, they opened the small door, right? Now, because they knew that they were Sai Bujari of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, they would not bow down to them. So, they thought, if we open the small door, they will have to put their heads in first to go through, so they will have to bow to us before they actually come in. But Sai Bujari were too clever, right? They put their foot in first, yeah. So, the very first thing that they saw, was Sabjadeh's dutti, basically. <laughs> they saw their feet, right? So they were very, very enraged. What that shows is, well, they were only what, seven and nine years of age, right? Very young. Sometimes we had five or seven, or seven and nine were very young. Okay, now, very young, and the, but they, right, were thinking like Sabjadeh, right? They think he was so sharp. They were then asked that, do you accept Islam or do you accept death? And Asaf then replied that we will never accept Islam. We are the sons of Guru Gobind Singh Ji and we will always remain in Chardi Kala as sons of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Yeah, and then they did the Jukare. Okay? Now, to scare them, now this you won't find in the film either. Now they got tortured. Okay? What they what they did to the Saiyaj was well, they tied a piece of hay on their hands, dry hay. You know what you feed the horses with? Okay? They tied that on their their hands and then what they did was they set that hay alight. Right? On Agalat as you can see you can imagine that burns all the way through and it burnt their hands. And burns are very excruciating, a lot of pain. Right? So those were the types of tortures that the Sahaja they had to go through just to break them down. Right? But even then, with so much pain, they never accepted defeat. Right? They straight uh, strong. And in the end, the Sahaja they were Shaheed when they were bricked uh, alive. Okay, now I'm not going to uh, carry on anymore. I'm going to stop here, okay, because there's a lot of information uh, and you guys have been sat here for a very long time. Honey. Okay, right now then, so, I'm going to paper on the pencil.